Welcome to Electra Online and now we're going to take a look at some interesting and complicated resistor circuits, especially the cube circuit and we're going to look at it in various ways. We're going to find the equivalent resistance of a cube circuit by putting the ends in various locations relative to one another and in each case we're going to find what we call the equivalent resistance. The reason why we're doing these videos, this one and the next several videos, is because there's a really interesting method by which you can solve these types of circuits. As long as there's a certain amount of symmetry in the circuit, there's a way to collapse the circuit in so that you can find the equivalent resistance in a much easier way. What we have to realize here is that when we go from A to B, we can of course go this path right here, or we can take the back path. And notice that for the, for the current, it's exactly the same path or the, it sees exactly the same thing, so those two paths are in essence equivalent. Or the current could come up here and then split up like this, and you can see that those two paths seem to be exactly the same as well. And notice that the amount of current coming up here probably is equal to the amount of current coming through there, and the amount of current coming through here is probably equivalent because there's total symmetry there. So what we can do because of this perfect symmetry is we can take this and basically push the circuit down into a flat circuit. In other words, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this corner and we're going to push it up against that corner. We're going to take this corner and push it up against this corner so that those two points will now become one and the same. But what will then happen is that this resistor will collapse into this resistor. So we can maybe a different color show how that works. I keep dropping my caps here. All right, so what we're going to do is collapse them together so that this resistor will collapse onto this resistor, this resistor will collapse onto that one, this resistor will collapse onto this one, this resistor will collapse onto that one, and this resistor will collapse on the one in the back. And so what happens then is what we're realizing is that these paths are all equivalent in the way they look to the current, so that means that if we collapse them, it's almost like we have two parallel circuits, and when we collapse the two, that means that the equivalent resistance would be half the resistance of each of the individual resistors. And the reason why I say that is this. If we have a, a circuit that looks like this with two resistors, and they each have resistor R, the equivalent resistance of that resistor circuit would be the product of the sum, so R equivalent would be equal to the product R times R over the sum R plus R, which is R squared over 2R, which is equal to R divided by 2. It's actually half. So what happens is the effect of pushing those two together, making it into an equivalent circuit that looks like this, basically these two resistors in parallel collapsing onto a single resistor means that we now have half the resistance of each of those two, as long as the two resistors, of course, are equal in size. If they're not equal in size, then we can use this technique. But since all the resistors are the same, having an equivalent resistance of R, we can go ahead and do this collapse methodology. So, doing that, we'll get the following result. So when we collapse the circuit, those two points come together, these two points come together, and all those resistors get squished together, we end up with something that looks like this. So we still have A right here. Oop, I guess I got the dot on the other side. Might as well put the dot on the correct side here, so there's my A and then these collapse together. So we have this collapse resistor, these two resistors, now this one will be by itself, like that. These two resistors will collapse together into this one, these two resistors will collapse into this one, these two resistors will collapse, like that. And you'll see in just a moment what this is going to look like, and then we have resistor, then we have point B right here at the bottom. All right, so what happened? So we now have an equivalent circuit. Now we've got to be careful about what we label the resistors. Notice this one right here, nothing has changed because it's just a single branch right here. So this is resistor R, and over here, this is a single branch that did not change, so that is R right there. But these two resistors collapse, those are basically in parallel. That means that the equivalent resistance of this one at the bottom right here is going to be R divided by two. And these two collapse at the bottom here, so that's going to be R divided by 2. And these two resistors are opposite to each other will collapse in, and so that will be resistor divided by 2. And the two on the top will combine together to form R divided by 2. And those two combined together, that will be R divided by 2. So that's how we take a cube circuit and make it into a flat circuit, which is a lot easier to solve than a cube circuit. All right, now the next thing we need to do is realize that we have something 
here. So these two will combine into a single resistor because that is a single circuit. And here that is a single branch. Those two will collapse together. So then we can redraw our circuit to make it look like this. R plus R over 2, that would be 3R over 2. So we have one resistor that comes this way. That will be 3 over 2R for that resistance. This one here will be R over 2. And then the one coming up here, that will be R over 2. These two will combine, and that will form 3 over 2R resistor, like that. And then this one here, down here, is still an R over 2 resistor. And so those are not combined, and that will then come together here. And this is your B point, and this here is your A point. All right, now we have something we can work with. That looks a lot like a breached, uh, Bridgestone uh, circuit. So what we see here is we see a branch, and then they come together, and then we have a branch again. So here we have three resistors connected like that. We can turn that from a delta to a Y conversion. So what we're going to do here is we say, okay, we can take this and make that into an equivalent resistor circuit that looks like this. Point here, there, and there. So we can take those three resistors, which are in a delta format, and a delta format is very difficult to solve because that looks like this. If you look at these, th these three resistors, you can say, well, that actually looks like this. So the top one was 3 over 2R, this one was R over 2, and this one here is R over 2. And that's a hard circuit to solve. What we can do is instead of trying to solve this, we can try to solve its equivalent delta resistance. So in other words, we take this, we make this look into, we make that look like a Y circuit. And they call that a delta to Y conversion. And the way you do that is, let's say that this here is R1, and this here is R2, and this here is R3. The way you find the equivalent resistors, so we can much more easily solve that circuit, is as follows. Okay, R1 will be equal to the product of the two adjacent resistors, which is these two resistors right here, which is R over 2 times 3R over 2, divided by the sum of the three resistors in the delta, which is 3 over 2R plus R over 2 plus R over 2. So this becomes 3R squared over 4, 3R squared over 4, divided by 3 halves plus a half is 4 halves plus a half is 5 halves R, 5 over 2R. Notice that this cancels out that, and this becomes 3 over 4R times the product of the inverse. Remember, when you divide by fractions, same as multiplying by its inverse, that would be 2 fifths. And then this 2 and this 4 cancel out. And so this becomes 3 over 10R. So R1 is the same as 3 over 10R in that Y circuit. Okay, how about R2? We do the same thing for R2. Notice we take the two adjacent resistors, multiply them together, divided by the sum of the three. So we have 3 over 2R times R over 2, divided by the sum, which is 3 over 2R plus R over 2 plus R over 2. And notice that that's exact same as what we have up here. So we know that it's equal to 3 over 10R. And finally, we take the third resistor right there, R sub 3. And we find that by taking the product of the two adjacent ones which is R divided by 2 times R divided by 2 divided by the sum of the 3. And of course, the sum of the 3 is going to be 5 over 2R. So that, looks, that one looks a little bit different than the first two. So here we get R squared divided by 4 divided by 5 over 2R. The square cancels out that. And this would be R divided by 4 times the inverse, the product of the inverse, 2 over 5th. That's 1, that's 2, so here we get 1 tenth, or R divided by 10. So now we have the three equivalent resistance in the Y circuit. I'm going to redraw the circuit like this. So we have the, the Y from the delta. So we have the first resistor here, we have the second resistor there, we have the third resistor there. So this delta circuit now has become a Y circuit, and we still have those two resistors there. Those haven't changed. And then that comes together to the B point. 
All right, so these are 3 over 2, and that one was an R over 2 resistor, equivalent resistor. Here, these three, notice R1, that's this resistor right here, which is this resistor right there, is 3 tenths R. R2, same thing, the one on top was 3 over 10 R, and the one on the bottom was 1 tenth R, like that. Now, all I have to do is solve this fairly simple circuit. Notice that those two resistors are in series, so are these two resistors. So this new circuit now becomes, we still have this one resistor right here, which is 3 tenths R. It branches out like this. So those two combine now. Notice 3 halves R is the same as 15 tenths R plus 3 tenths. 15 plus 3 is 18 tenths R for this one, which is the same as 9 fifths R. And on the bottom, we add these two together. That is 5 tenths plus 1 tenth, which is 6 tenths R, which is the same as 3 fifths R. Okay, so now we have two resistors in parallel. We find the equivalent resistance for those two. So now we end up with, this is still my A point. There's a resistor of 3 tenths R. And those two in parallel, we have to take the product of the sum. So for these two right here, we're going to take the product of the sum, which is 9 over 5R plus 3 over 5R divided by 9 over 5R plus 3 over 5R. The product here is, uh, whoop, that should be the product, not the sum. The product here, that would be 27 over 25R squared divided by 12 over 5R. So this cancels out that one. So, wow, I'm kind of running out of room here. So this is equal to, let's come over here and continue. We have 27 over 25R times the inverse, which is 5 over 12. This cancels out with that. Divide the top and bottom by 3, so this becomes 4, this becomes 9, so that's 9 over 20R. Okay, so this becomes 9 over 20R. This is point B, and now all we have to do is add those two together. Now they're in series. 3 tenths R is the same as 6 twentieth R, so 6 twentieth plus 9 twentieth is 15 twentieth R. So now we have a single resistor between A and B. We add these together, that's 6 and 9, that's 15 over 20 R, so 15 over 20 R, which is 3 quarters R, which is the equivalent resistance of that cube circuit. So, quick review. How did we do this? Well, we recognized the symmetry. The symmetry meant that we can collapse this from a cubic to a flat resistor circuit. Every time we combine two resistors, we combine those two resistors, since they're in parallel, the equivalent resistors half the resistance. So, from two R resistors, we get a half R resistance. These two collapse together, form a R over 2 resistance. Those two collapse together, R over 2. The front and the back collapse together, R over 2. And these two on the bottom collapse together, and they form an R over 2 resistance. Now we try to solve that flat resistor circuit with one more complication. Is so we have a delta circuit here. If we redraw this one like this, notice that this looks like a delta circuit, and we want to find the equivalent Y circuit. We can do that by using this technique. Each of the resistors are equal to the product of two adjacent resistors divided by the sum of the three. So you multiply those two together, divided by the sum. You multiply these two together, divided by the sum. You multiply these two together, divided by the sum. That gives you the equivalent resistance of the Y circuit right here. We plug those values in. Then you realize that this is a much more simplified circuit. You add these together, you get this. Then you have a parallel circuit, use the product of the sum technique to find the equivalent resistance here. Then you have a series circuit, add the two together and simplify and it's 3 quarters R. And that's how you solve a cube circuit by collapsing the circuit and solving the remaining flat circuit. That's how we do that.